think what we need to do if we're going to take the step of, you know, if you look at even um, Scientific American has this beautiful discussion of the boundaries where Newtonian physics and quantum physics seem to distinguish themselves. Yeah. And this has to do with your question of matter. And if we're going to take the step of looking at mind as an emerging property of energy and start talking about quantum rules about the nature of energy, which is a microstate, versus the rules of what our bodies do, which is a macro state, we just have to be super, super honoring of the controversies and very careful about, like that colleague who said, you know, observation creates reality. Well, once you start talking like that, it's like, you know, that's, as far as my colleagues say, that's actually not what quantum physics says, and it's actually not what even the, the Copenhagen interpretation of the double yeah. slit experiment says. So it's, it's just, and to put it really simply, even if the Copenhagen interpretation is accurate, that is you send an electron through a piece of metal with two slits in it, and the act of observation is the process that collapses the wave function and makes it a particle more than light metal wave, that act of observation is not creating the electron. No. It's just altering that electron's state. And that's very different than saying it's creating the electron. So yeah. that's just a simple example of how, you know, we as human beings create these narratives that can seem fantastical. I think the field of mental health is ready to move to the level of mind as an emergent property of energy. And if we do that, all of us who are working in this field as educators need to stay super conservative about statements we make about the nature of energy. That's, that's what I'll just say. I was doing a workshop with the wheel and a woman like in the third row of this workshop is crying like crazy and it was time to take the microphone. She took the microphone and she says the following thing. She says, um, you know, I'm 65 years old and for most of my mature adult aware life, I've thought I was insane. Mm -hmm. I just, I've always thought I was insane until about 30 minutes ago. And she's crying and everyone was like listening. And she goes, 30 minutes ago, you said that if the hub of the wheel is in fact the plane of possibility, then it would have characteristics of a micro state and would be energy that was having these principles of quantum physics that I described earlier here and I described in that workshop, where you would have basically an arrow free existence timelessness, where you would feel this sense of deep interconnection, which is what many, many people feel, right? And where you would get this weird feeling of emptiness and fullness simultaneously, which can make you feel like you're out of your mind, when in fact you're in your mind. So she says, when you gave those principles of quantum physics and proposed that the hub is the plane and the plane is a microstate, Whereas when these plateaus and peaks arise, they have more features of macrostates because they're accumulations of configurations of, it's a long story, but the various combinations that could have created those plateaus or even that peak, that they have more Newtonian features of an arrow of time and they feel like they're discrete entities rather than this fluid openness. She said, that's what I've been feeling since I was an adolescent and no one would talk like this. So I thought I must be just like on the edge of insanity, she said. But now with this description you've offered, I realize I've just been very aware of pure awareness. Hmm. And, and that's a rare thing actually. And she's crying and crying. She goes, now I realize I'm the opposite of insane. I just had more clarity and you've just helped me see how grounded it is. And, you know, for me, that was like this incredible moment. Everyone in the workshop was going, oh, wow. And it made me feel so, um, so moved, you know, that if we stay conservative, but integrating around the sciences, and if we take what appears to be an uncommon, 
move of saying mind is an emergent phenomenon of energy and then go to the research experts on energy, but stay really close to what they say and not what popularization of quantum views are, then I think we can be really well grounded to move the field of mental health forward. And that woman, she's not my patient, she was just a workshop participant. She's a great example of probably what a lot of people, and I know it's true of myself too, wrestle with. Like, how can you have these kind of bodily experiences where you live in a body, you only get about 100 years, but you drop into pure awareness and you feel infinity and eternity. Yeah. And this is probably why. Well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com and our podcast of the same name and learn more about the science of you.